Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, January 8th, 2023. I'm sorry, January 15th. That was last week. January 15th. I'm Larry Rhodes or Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. I'm the Wombat. Shoot first, <clears throat> ask Excellent. second, and then apologize third because shooting is bad. There you go. And our guests today are Dread Pirate Higgs from Western Canada. Welcome. Oi. And the John Richards is attempting to come back in. He was here a minute ago. He had some video problems. Yeah. Doesn't poor, concern the radio poor audience. <laughs> poor Apple computers, right? Yeah. 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 That's what it is. Yep. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. The Atheist Society or Knox, of Knoxville, ASK, uh, and we'll tell you more about them after the mid-show breaks. So be sure to stick around. Wombat, or maybe I should say dread. What's our topic today? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, we can talk about a couple of things, but I guess what makes us happy? Oh, and I love we it. Have this, we have this great term mm. which uh, originates in uh, ancient Greece. Uh, I believe it began with Aristotle, and it's called eudaimonia, and it but relates to what is human flourishing or what uh, what contributes to human flourishing. So it's a great, it's a great term. Mm. It's time for a revival, a eudaimonia revival. Nice. And I love, I want to, I, what I love to do is flourish into the topic of how we can flourish. But before we do that, Dredd, I can't go a week without your daily invocation. How about we get into it? <laughs> As you will. Appreciate Our it. Lord, <laughs> who art in a colander, al dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs, and the sauces, and the grog, whenever and ever. Raw man. Okay, guys, that was great. Nice and silly, I love it. All right. John Richard, so glad to see you back. Speaking of things yeah, that were my, my phone, because I've had all sorts of problems. And uh, now my my mouse has run down. It's it's a battery-operated Wi-Fi. So I'm recharging my mouse. Otherwise, I can't use my desktop. <laughs> this, is, glad... this is what happens when you I don't join in with you guys for a whole month. No sweat. I'm glad to see you either way. Like I'm you 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 got through it and you're flourishing. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> so, yeah. Guys, I would like to catch up on everyone because it has been a while. Uh, for John Richards, I know you got a lot on your plate. I'll just throw this out. Uh, I went over to volunteer at a VEX robot competition as a judge. Uh, VEX robot is an engineering competition for elementary, middle, and uh, high schools where they build robots with unknown challenges set ahead. And then when the challenge is unveiled, the kids have to come together, work together, figure out a way to modify their general robot to be perfect for the particular challenge, whether it's slapping a disc hockey style or shooting a ball into a basket or lifting up a load and dropping it off in a very specific location without any manual control. It's a really interesting competition and it's cool yeah, yeah. to see all these little kids already start to ask themselves engineering questions that they'll see in the industrial world. And so what we did as judges, myself and uh, members of my staff, we went down, uh, we, we didn't coach, but we helped a lot of the kids think through a lot of their design problems and overall rated their success and ability to work together as a team. It was a really rewarding uh, chance for every, all of us like participate in like the next generation of engineers that are going to be coming up. Oh. Potentially we may even hire. So I love it. I love it. It was just a really good rewarding experience. Very nice. But, Very good. Thanks. Appreciate it. Larry yeah. Rhodes, what's on your book? What, how, don't don't you dare tell me the thing that I wish I could be doing all my time. Just playing. Oh no, I, I'm working most of the time. I still nice. work a forty hour week from home, but um, <clears throat> I, I've been playing uh, Star Citizen lately. Very. Uh, cool. It's a pre-release, so it's still kind of buggy and slow, but it's a lot of fun. 
Nice. Uh, and it's it's very realistic. It has great graphics. Excellent graphics. I wish I could run them at full speed. But I have a challenge on my computer graphics cards. So I well, deal with what I can. For the game to come out, right? So I'm yeah. happy for you. <laughs> That's awesome, though. I hope you keep enjoying it. <clears throat> and check out some other cool games. I'll, I'll, I'll recommend them to you as they come forward. But like No Man's Sky, Star Child, uh, Mass Effect. I don't know if you played that, but ooh, there's a lot of no. stuff in the space that we can get you yeah. into. Cool. Dread Power Higgs, how you been? Been well, been well. I've been doing good, yes. Um, my, uh, I, yeah, I've got a couple of things coming up. End of the month, uh, my court case where I will be vindicated um, for this. Vindicated? Uh, well, yeah, it's an ongoing thing with uh, with the police. Uh, um, but uh, that's another story. I, I, I did get contacted uh, yesterday by the president of the uh, the clergy project. And it turns out that uh, he is, in fact, a pastafarian. And yeah. uh, I guess they right now they have 1,225 participants in the clergy mm. project. Yeah. Um, 1,225. They are actually, they are wow. actually hosting a, a big event in Vancouver on the yep. 28th of this month, and I've been invited. So... Um, I may go there representing the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster of British Columbia. Let's go. And getting more clergy project uh, uh, pastafarians involved. So I love oh, it. I'm I love quite it. Great. excited. Very excited yeah. about it. I can, I can give you an update on that because uh, I, I got a, a contact from not the president, but another director of uh, the clergy project and had him on our show, Free Thought okay. Channel. Free thought hour only yesterday and he was a great great guy he started out as a christian raised by parents who were very heavily involved in the anglican church oh that's interesting. um you you call it the episcopalian i think over where you are and um he eventually became a missionary for the christian church mm. and spent 25 years in china but after five years there he became an atheist <laughs> and now he is a key leader in in the clergy project and and cfi you know the yeah csi the, yeah yeah mm. center for skeptical inquiry that's one well mm. dread i hope i hope nothing but flourishing in the future in the near future hopefully too and speaking of yeah. flourishing you know i'm, I'm so looking forward to a lot of you Des Moines. <laughs> you. Keep, keep yeah. trying. We're gonna make that. We got to make it into a, a really awesome rap song first. Get it yeah. you know, hooked into the younger generation, I, I, and then catch on to it. But yeah, go on. I think they're developing a treatment for it. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> a vaccine, some sort, of, some, some sort of cream that you apply. Yeah. John Richards, uh, I'm so glad uh, you realized that there's cracks in the armor of Apple, right? Like it, it's just not this monolith of perfection that we all seem to, to take for granted. It's, for, right? it, it's it's cracks in the armor of the operator. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah. the problem with real. That's a lot of problems with religions. It's like, hey, there's a problem with your God. No, it's me. I'm the yeah. sinner. I'm the problem. Yeah. It's like, no, it's the God. It's we know the God's plot. Come on. Okay. I'll give you another chance to like reor. So I see the Apple keyboard. I see the iPhone. I see the Apple watch. It's falling apart. I'm saying it's a house of cards. What else can we say? John Richards, <laughs> it's been a month since I've seen you, though. How you been? I'm fine. Thank you very much. We had a great uh, family Christmas, mostly for the kids, of course. And uh, and, and we are, um, I'm not sure whether to describe it as lucky or unfortunate to have lots of children. <laughs> and uh, where have I gone from there? Well, I then, because I took a couple of weeks off, really, from mm. internet stuff. And since then i've been very active i've okay. been quite prolific making little short videos sciencey videos explaining how evolution works and how science uh, works in two or three minutes and i've stacked them on the youtube channel free thought channel and it's it's working I, i'm getting more subscribers more views yeah i'm pleased i love very it cool i love it and it's the sort of stuff that needs to be normalized you know, yeah. when you may not realize this, but like when I was a kid in the 90s, a little thing called Pokemon came out. And mm. the crazy thing about Pokemon was that every parent hated it, 
called it the devil, called it Satan worship. And we're also throwing up the idea that it they evolve. Like that was one of the key <laughs> words. It's like they use evolution in a video game for children. And in my head, it's like, why are I was in California at the time? So it's like, why are you why why is that a bad thing? I thought everybody understood what evolution was. I didn't know, I didn't contextualize it with a bad thing. It was yeah. just some things that a lot of parents had a problem with. But thankfully, the the invisible hand pushed Pokemon to like a level where it was untouchable through the the ire of you know soccer moms and 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 uh <laughs> terrible dads and moms. and made it where it's like evolution's now a household name everyone knows it everyone kind of understands it and instead of fighting it what christians just did was said well there's two different kinds of evolution or maybe three different kinds there's the macro and the mini and macro we're gonna and like, micro yeah we're gonna have to like obfuscate the facts instead of ignore them just so that we can maintain some sort of leverage and yeah, I'm cool. hoping that over time, as kids educate themselves, and uh, because it might be my, the best way for them to get out of these like indoctrinated well, circles, is to realize yeah. that there isn't really a difference between these two different levels. It's all one system. And the more consistent and, and broader your system is, the less of a double standard you might be operating under. And I think that's yeah. for the better. There's also, there's also a tendency to oversimplify it. I mean, uh, you know, like Ken Ham. Uh, and his, uh, you know, his big boat there. Uh, mm -hmm. Just, it's a, like a straw man. They straw man the whole mm -hmm. evolutional, uh, evolutionary theory right. into this. You know, like it is. It's, it's a, a true straw man where you know you, it's you absolutely give right. you a picture of uh, your grandfather looking like an ape. You know, <laughs> and saying, "Well, I wouldn't want my ancestors looking like this or some stupid thing." Yeah, and the whole thing is, why do people go to the gym? So they can look like gorillas. Like, what's the whole idea behind it? <laughs> you want to look like apes. Apes look cool, first of all. And then second of all, that's not how evolution works to begin with. Larry, what do you think? Well, it's not just evolution. I think that if you'll find that anything, any big thing that goes like really viral for kids, hmm. you'll find churches say, that's of the devil, that's of right. Satan. It, <laughs> mainly because it's distracting the kids from learning their the. Uh, religion is right. distracting them from thinking about sin and salvation and, and jesus right and they just they can't have that kind of competition for the next generation that they're trying to yes. Yes. yes i i wonder yeah. if, if they brought out a game which was jesus based you know and you played this game and eventually jesus came back and everything was wonderful would they like that what makes me wonder is there's been a movie come out recently which is What's it called? Um, uh, the anti, the return of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is what the chat says. Yeah, yeah, and um, so oh, this passion. guy, the, this this uh, Christian actor, has is publicizing it by coming out with statements like, "I think the return of Jesus is looming." Okay, that was his word, looming. So I'll tell you this right now: there was a show where that had Jesus come back. And it was played as straight as possible to an extent, but it was called Black Jesus. It was on Comedy Central. And mm. it's just like, Jesus comes back from Nazareth. He's still got the robe, he's, he's, uh, uh, the, the, the robes, still has like the sandals. He's got the holes, he's ready to go, but he's black. And people were like, nah, not ours, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, and it's like, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm literally the guy. You want me to turn some juice from water? I can do that right now. Boom, boom, boom. Let me walk on water. Like, why, why aren't you guys believing me? It's just like, nice. I don't know. It's just something, something to put a finger on. Maybe we can put a finger on it, but we just don't like it. I don't know. It's just not yeah. what we want to. Doesn't like, fit our worldview. Doesn't fit our worldview. Sorry, yeah. like we, the trend has moved forward. Um, so guys, uh, uh, our chat has also mentioned that my mom also believes Pokemon is the devil uh that is from popcorn appreciate the chat also a quick question from the chat is um a game recommendation for larry that you should play sea of thieves if you like if you want to or if you were considering like no man's sky or or a star child it's not a game that takes place in space but it does run on lower end computers and it's all about being a pirate and you might be you might enjoy it and then also okay, i'll check it out Famous Jesus movies. There was a question for you, John Richards, on what was your thoughts on the Passion of the Christ as a movie about Jesus? <laughs> the Mel yeah, Gibson I, one. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't seen it. Of course, I've I've heard a lot about it. But it's a movie. 
It's a movie, it's guys. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. violent. Good point. Good point. I have not. I. I don't think I. They played it in school. Believe it or not, when I was in. Uh, yeah, and not on an on ironic sense. It was just like, hey, we have an hour to kill. Would you guys mind if I play a movie? And I was like, oh, cool. What's it going to be? And then it started being the Passion of Christ, and I was like, kind of checked out. But I was a Christian back then. But even back then, I was like. I'd rather yeah. learn stuff than watch this yeah. kind of thing in class. I'm sure if you want us to do that. Anyway, guys, I did not flourish under watching uh, The Passion of the Christ in school. I wanted to be happy. And I thought that might be a good topic for us to talk about. Like, mm. what makes us happy? Because you, if you ask the internet what makes an atheist happy, you might Google it or Bing it, unfortunately, and get results such as, they like to eat babies. They like to sacrifice goats in the wrong way. Uh, they don't call their moms on their birthdays. Like, what are the terrible things that atheists do that we can buck that trend or that impression? And what can we just simply explain what makes us happy? And I like okay. to go in a roundtable discussion on that real quick. Larry, sure. what do you think? You go first. What 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 makes you happy as an atheist? Well, I think it depends. It just from different person to person. I think. Uh whatever makes us happy but generally human flourishing and progress um oh great great you know uh, we, we value education we value humanity per se we we want the best for uh, our neighbors um you know just um if we make a better society we get benefits of a better better society absolutely it's well said yeah the better we can make the world the better <laughs> and still be alive in the world the better for us too rising tide lifts all boats basically all right so dread you know you got the heavy topic so i'm gonna go to john yeah let's go to uh go to john there if you want john what makes you happy yeah well uh, um thank you for coming to me because beyond, i'm an english beyond functional apple products I just want <laughs> yeah. i i'm an englishman and i don't do emotions happy <laughs> or sad i I just do sanguine. <laughs> okay, very cool, very cool, and dry humor too, right? Yes. 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 Okay, you guys, you guys wrote the book on that. You have the to British wit. Forth. British wit, but obviously, you know, you do a lot of social activity. You, you definitely contributed a lot in terms of the free thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm. do you enjoy? I that? like. I do. I like. I like people. Hmm. I'm a social animal, an extreme social animal, you could say. And so I'm I'm very keen to interact and engage and just yeah just you know there's a, a new breed of dogs which okay. have, they've been they've been crossed with a couple of other breeds and they are they're crossed with an intention of making them very empathic very friendly lovely pets and what they've done is they've taken poodles and spaniels which already showed some of those characteristics smushed them together. And they've come out, they've come out with these dogs that are so dependent <laughs> upon human contact, they've been redesignated Velcro dogs <laughs> <laughs> be, because they suffer from um, anxiety, separation anxiety, yeah, yeah. separation anxiety. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it it's like interesting because my my Jack Russell does uh, suffers yeah. from that. If yeah. if there yeah. isn't someone in the room, and that's why yeah. I always ask you guys if you can hear her. When right. she's howling yeah. upstairs right. because she's, mm -hmm. I'm not around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my mother had poodles. It was the same way. Yeah, so yeah. I am playing a game called Game Deck right now. It's an RPG that takes place in like a cyberpunk world. Think of it as just like you can dial into a computer. Other people dial into a computer. But there's a conceit in the game where you can make friends with other humans who are playing the game or you can make your own friend. You, you pay money to a company as like DLC or like downloadable content. And they will uh -huh. make a character in the game that fits your specifications, that uh, has civil rights, that has ooh. awareness. It's an AI, but it's your yeah. character. And that character can be wow. love with you or hate you. It can be anything yeah. you want. And then there's the yeah. question of, okay, is this okay? <laughs> is this, right. is this, a, I mean, like, it's, a, it's not a real thing, but like, is it okay? Like, is that healthy for the human being who's ooh. enacted that? And I'm thinking yeah. like, is it good to make dogs that need to have humans? Like, or is there... Is there a boundary that we're beginning to cross there if we haven't crossed yeah. it already? John right. Richards, what do you think? I see such a parallel there mm -hmm. between making your own AI character and choosing your own God. Because, mm -hmm. you know, 
nobody else's God is quite the God you want. That's right. why the, the religions have all broken up into different uh, uh, cults and sects and denominations. Right. And so many, I think there's something like 30,000 different denominations of Christians at yeah. the last count. And of course, that's not including the new one in Australia, which the new branch of Anglicanism, which fell out with the original branch of Anglicanism in Australia, right. because they can't agree whether to marry or bless homosexual unions. Sure. So, you, you know, this is exactly the same thing. This is me saying my, what I want. I want exactly these characteristics, exactly these properties uh, on my chosen God or AI friend in uh, in in the uh, the game. I see. Mm -hmm. I also agree. Yeah, like if you, man, it's just the weirdest thing. If you drive down the street where I'm at, just the street that leads to my home, you're going to cross two churches. And like I said, my commute's very, very short, but there'll be two churches. But if I drive deeper into downtown, I'm crossing seven churches. In fact, if yeah. I want to give you directions of where I live, I'd be like, yeah. take a left at Passion of the uh, Assembly and then go yeah. past the Blessed Union of Holies and then turn yeah. left at the God's Chosen Lambs of the future, yeah. and then yeah. past the bypass of the, the Chosen Ones. It's like, it's all just different <laughs> yeah. versions of the same God a couple of blocks yeah. away from each other yeah. because yeah. they mm. don't like that flavor and they can go somewhere yeah. else. It's like, yeah. why are there yeah. so many different churches? Along the way, there'll be snakes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there might be some well, that have snakes. It's, it's, it's a question. It's, it's a great point. It's, we, it's, we choose it's, it's, God. It's, we want like potato chips, basically. Yeah, yeah. This, this is the whole indication that God is man-made, mm -hmm. just like your AI character in that game. Or if there is one God, you, the probability that you're worshiping that one based on just what your parents followed or what country you were right. in or how much <clears throat> money you had at the time or what you were exposed to in your time period is mm. astronomically low that you're mm, actually yeah. worshiping mm. the accurate one. Mm. Well, just from the low. sheer number of religions on the planet, it's mm, like yeah. one in 10,000. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and exactly. is that your fault, or is that the God's fault for not contacting you at that point? Right. And this is why religions have to have strong, strong sanctions to prevent people from leaving, because exactly. they know the tendency to do that is high. So, so they've got to have severe punishments to keep you in the flock, keep okay. you under control. Guys, I'm buckled up. And speaking of like keeping us from leaving, I'm ready to. I'm ready to sit through this this terminology. <laughs> conversation uh, uh, Dread well, Pirate Higgs. How, how about I share this quote with you? It, and, it's, and, rele it's relevant. And spell it too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Eudaimonia. E U D A I M O N I A. Okay. Thanks. Um, anyway, Ooh. that's to do with human flourishing. Anyway, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm reading. Um, I'm reading. I'm working on a Kant's uh, uh, critique of pure reason. Okay. And in doing that, I'm also reading a a, a, a companion, so a Kant a Kant companion. Uh, and so anyway, I'm, I'm working on this chapter. It's called "The Supreme Principle of Morality," which is written by Alan W. Wood, and he had this great quote, and I I really really like this. So he's talking about the principle, you know, what is the principle of morality that that Kant's after. And he says, as a, a parathetical, he says, uh, in other words, those sentimentalists who think that what satisfies the heart, but not the head, represents greater moral purity, purity mm. have things exactly wrong. Yep. Where the head has been corrupted, it was the heart that corrupted it. Mm. And the first remedy for the corruption of our hearts is to learn to think in an enlightened way with our heads about what to do and which feelings we should allow to influence us. Right. Here, here. I I'm, just, yeah, absolutely. I was just, I love it. That. I love it. And, I, uh, and there you go. That's when you think about eudaimonia, mm -hmm. what is it yeah. that we should uh, allow to guide us towards an understanding of uh, human flourishing and, and uh, mm. what it means to be happy. I love well, it. I, I still think, I still think and suspect that, eudaimonia could easily be neutralized by some vinegar or acetic acid <laughs> <laughs> larry we're near in the bottom sure. of the half hour shot of penicillin yeah and sure uh -huh. stay tuned for the second half of the digital free thought radio hour on wozo radio 
103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year, and we have over 1,000 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City, in Barley's Taproom, and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. We also have Tuesday evening Zoom Ask Meetups. Uh, so if you'd like to join us on Zoom, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. Uh, you can find ASK on Facebook, meetup.com, or just go to the website at knoxvilleatheists.org, by the way. If you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Don't find one. Start one. Start one. Start one. Start one. Well, I'm bet, where do we want to pick up? Yo, so many places. Uh, that brilliant quote that was brought over by Dread uh, reminded me of two scenarios. Or one scenario. I'll just keep it to one. Uh, I was talking with a lady who said uh, she had a tattoo. And she showed me the tattoo. It's like a brand new tattoo. And it had three words one soul body or soul body mind and she's like these are the three steps to like be uh happy and whole it's like you got to take care of your soul you got to take care of your body and then you got to take care of your mind in that order larry i already know what you're gonna say i'm me, triggered <laughs> i'm triggered <laughs> story up so in my head i was like i don't want to have to do the jump on topic of like whether souls or not exist, which I yeah. know Larry wants to jump on. Yeah. But I was like, yeah. is it in that order? She says, yeah, because I care about my soul, that my body uh, next and then my mind. I'm like, in my head, I was like, I, I did actually say this. It's like, your mind is a product of your body. Like, if you don't take care of your body, your mind, like, is going to fall apart too. That should be an indication to you that these two things are related. They're not like a metaphysical aspect. Like, your, your continuum of brain synapses of this physical thing that's inside your head is your mind. You can cut off your arm, you still have your mind. You mess you with your head, your mind goes away. Like that should be an indication. So you gotta take care of your body, take care of your mind. You gotta eat right, you gotta uh, uh, think well, you gotta behave well. There's a bunch of stuff that goes into taking care of your body that supplementary and directly affects your, your mindset. And if you can do that, then maybe you can get yourself into a position where you realize that souls aren't real. And maybe you can flip the two and just be like, hey, I'm just going to take care of myself. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you, know, you, you, could, you could even go a step further. Um, mm. I mean, when you think about like uh, Rene Descartes, uh, cogito ergo sum, right? Uh, I uh -huh. think, therefore, I am. Right. So that, of course, was dualism. The mm. idea that mind and body are two separate and distinct entities. Um, whereas monists, of course, believe that it's all just one and the same thing. Uh, mind or consciousness is just an emergent property of being in the world. And it has no uh, other significance uh, outside of the body. I mean, mm -hmm. without a body, you right. don't have a mind. So mm -hmm. without um, a body, you don't have you a know, mind the, 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 or consciousness. The distinction it in that case as a monist is irrelevant. Mm, mm, and uh, well, you know most people think in dualist terms uh because it's convenient but right. uh, fundamentally so uh we are monists or, or that's what I, I think anyway. yeah i agree i support that larry what do you think one complex <laughs> thing rather than a bunch of separate small less complex things like no that's well, that, I'm, I'm just gonna be a tech tech technicality here go for, uh, it, well, go for it you could have your head in a jar <laughs> and you wouldn't have a body but you would have a mind but your head is the body your head is the body okay. in that case the head would be the body it would be yeah. all that's really needed as long as you could support oxygen and and blood to the brain and and keep it working Correct. you would still have a mind because the mind Correct. is what the brain does you know it, it produces your mind uh, and if you yeah, take damage you, to you, you, you couldn't, take damage you couldn't to have brain, a mind without the sensations of uh, you know the inputs of your uh, senses you could use uh, the mind you would could be use a computer to to uh, like the old uh, head in a jar 
analogy. You could use a computer to stimulate to send mm -hmm. simulations of the sensations to your brain, and it would still right. function. Right. Um, Here, but here's anyway, my here's getting a thought a process field. on it because mm -hmm. I love this. I love this train. So, like, my mom has a cochlear implant. With the cochlear implant, uh, her 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 actual ear doesn't work her eardrum and all the ear canal does not work Cochlear. she has a electronic device that takes sound from outside turns it into an electrical signal and feeds it directly to her brain right so right. like in a weird way like she doesn't have her ears but she does have like this cybernetic capability of, of still experiencing sound and it's just as real to her as it is to anybody else because it's just sure. bypassing like all the original routes. So what if we did the same thing with eyes, tasting, feeling, all that stuff, and you had like a literal brain? I right. don't, I don't think it's that far fetched of an idea. She'd still think, she'd still have civil rights, she'd still be a person, but like her experience would just be digital or like uh, based on computers rather than like through this meat space. So like the body can change, and and to an aspect, uh, how she experiences the world changes. But in my head the mind is still a, a has to be grounded in a body experience and that body can be variable, but it still needs to be grounded to a body. You can't just have the mind experience without the body is, is my conclusion. Uh, would you guys yeah, agree with me? Exactly. That's my sure. Conclusion. And Larry, I like that. The mind is what the body does. <laughs> no, the mind is what the brain does. The brain yeah. does, right. which, which yeah. is your no, body. You have uh, on, doppelganger John and real John. And you can't tell which is which. <laughs> true, true, true. Just, yeah, just, but the point I was going to make is you can damage the brain and it will affect your mind. Uh, okay. You can do surgery on the brain. You can take uh, drugs and it will affect the mind. But it's a chemical process that affects the resulting mind uh, right. experience. And if you look online, there's actually people who are working on digital eyes right now. There's a clip that you can put on your hand that sends visual signals directly to your brain. Yeah, your like Jordi LaForge. Kind of like that. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I, I would love to see us be able to, you know, invest more time and effort into this so that we can not necessarily cure. Um, I like not I don't want to be ableist, but like there are some people who are like blind or like, I'm cool, I'm good. And some people are deaf or like, I don't need a cochlear implant. But for the option for the people who don't want to be blind or don't want to be deaf, but maybe even culturally blind and deaf, but still want to be able to hear and see, we have the technology to give it to them so that they have that option to be able to get there. That's that's the path that I'd love for us to get into it, where it's like hey, you have that you can hear if you want to hear, you can see if you want to see. We have that. That's not a problem, blindness or deafness. It's it's now a lifestyle. Oh, that'd be so fantastic. Anyway, um, we were talking about things that make you happy, things that make me happy, uh, science, critical thinking, and delving into like matters of philosophy, believe it or not. I also like drawing too and, and playing games. Uh, Larry has a slightly different taste for video gaming than I do, which is totally fine. You play like hardcore time intensive games. I'm more of like, what can I, what can I get through during a bathroom break on my phone? And then like <laughs> at the end of the day. But uh let's see. Dread on yeah. the concept of human flourishing, mm. you know. I before we get into like the metaphysical aspects of like what makes God happy or what would make a God happy, what do you think is the catch-all thing that makes people happy or uh able to reach eudaimonia um as a concept? Like what are we lacking right now? Wow. That will get us to that state where we can do well, yeah. forcing. <laughs> well, I, I, I suppose uh, uh, lesser reliance on, on things outside yourself. Mm. Um, you know, if because it, it, you end up being your own despot. <laughs> you know, like uh, if, if the things that make you happy are things outside yourself, then it's all contingent. Um, well, I mean, uh, there's things outside yourself that you actually need to be happy, like food, shelter, um, you know, the essentials. So that's one of the things that I was going to mention about what do we need uh, to make a, a eudaimonia, uh, like generalized in society, is we need the basics, and we need them to be provided for everyone, you know, uh, whether they're rich, poor, or whatever, they need the basics to mm -hmm. even think about being eudaimonious. Yeah, yeah, you know, and that's uh, actually part of the argument towards uh, the basic uh, income, the guaranteed right. basic income. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think it's coming, but it may be another yeah. hundred or two years before that happens. But you know, robots and, and artificial intelligence are going to take our jobs, and they're going to yeah. just do it without they're us. Gonna, they're going to take our jobs, so we got to get. No, I mean that's a good thing. Technology. It gives us more free time, <laughs> but we need to supply right um, 
uh, income so that you know the kid people won't have to worry about it. There or, are countries that do that right now. Or revolutionary mm-hmm. change the idea of what money is to begin with. Maybe have it come with an expiration date. That way it's not just this thing that you feel like you need a hoard and only give to your family. Rather, it's just like a, hey, it's it's a thing that we use to to have and maintain a good state of welfare, period. And it's not a thing that you need to hold on to or use for power or get extra advantages over people. It's just, here's your basic needs. You got it. You're happy. Go have fun. Go have fun. Go be an artist. Go and be an artist. Go be right. be well, you know, and, and that would certainly uh, make education uh, mm. more relevant to, to people who are otherwise and accessible to make, yeah. to make ends yeah. meet and, mm-hmm. you know, shelter themselves. Right. If they have, it, it becomes, uh, you know, something within, within grasp. Right. To ed- educate and improve self-improvement and whatnot. And, and so this those is other things you're not having to worry about so much. And this is not an uncommon argument. Like back in the days when we, we used to give war to like beaver pelts, right? Beaver pelts would depreciate and fall apart over time. And people were like, you know what? We can't trade pelts all the time. What if we had like gold or rare metals? They're harder to get, but they can represent sets of things that are easier to care that are much easier to carry well plus gold and and silver have intrinsic value themselves you can make things out of them that are and it uh, was and that started that transition then people are like you know this is heavy what if we just had like papers like well who's going to give out the paper because whoever gives out the paper is going to have a lot of power over us because they're controlling how we buy and feed our families and stuff it's like trust me it's going to work it's going to work it's going to work next thing you know we have like this currency and and it, and we begin to see the the separation of classes. And now it's like, if you ask me for five bucks, I'd be like, who has money on them? <laughs> I feel bad. It's like, I'm sorry, I don't carry cash. Like my money is numbers that exist in a bank somewhere that I have access on my phone that I don't actually see. I never, I don't handle money. I just like swipe a card or I like push a button and things show up at my house. Like that's it. And now- there is the push for crypto, which is its own bag of worms, but it's like another competing concept for yeah, money. I've started it's, getting into it. And it's like, what is this? What does that work? Does this expire? Is it forever? Like, what does it mean? How does it value? Where is it? What does it mean? What is it? What does having one of these coins that are virtual mean? Like, how how does any of this work? And so I love that it's at least evolving, maybe more rapidly than uh we're aware of but maybe we can get ourselves to a better system through a more competing trial and error than um one system where we clearly right. see wealth is not being distributed as with the equity that it should be or ought to be all right guys i have a question from the chat they'd love to know what your thoughts are on biblical angels and uh do they freak you out or not and for me yes they do freak, freak you out, out. <laughs> only if you think they're real <laughs> only if you think they're real they are a freaky concept even like so if you showed a biblically accurate angel to a christian they'd freak out and they'd be like oh that doesn't look like what i think an angel looks like like a uh, a bruce willis with wings or yeah, well, go go there what would it actually look like according to the bible according to the bible six wings yeah yeah six, six wings, wings a body that's basically a eyes. ring that has a bunch of eyes all over it uh makes noises that sound like seven trumpets coming out of yeah, like it's a monster something. it's a monster what else mm-hmm. can you say it's an ugly pokemon speaking of pokemon maybe that's the <laughs> <laughs> dread your thoughts even freakier than a flying spaghetti monster no no offense hopefully meant by that but i'm just wondering like yeah i much prefer the flying spaghetti monster visually more interesting i think <laughs> than any biblical angel i've heard of so and much more powerful and much more much more much more powerful much more powerful Uh, let's see larry quick thoughts from you what do you what's your thoughts on biblically accurate angels oh yeah i think according to what you tell me i haven't really done much research on angels um but i mean what i get from tv and movies is they're beautiful and matter of fact um satan is supposed to be uh god's most beautiful angel Right. And uh, if they got six wings and eyes all over their body and and uh, what is it, trumpet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So trumpet, that, this trumpet is an voices. interesting concept. This is yeah. an interesting concept. It's because it's weird. Larry's right. They they on TV all kind of look like Julia Roberts, but mm-hmm. they are actually pretty <laughs> ugly if, from the biblical accurate representations. But yet Lucifer could just be 
like a regular schmuck of a guy. Like he may not necessarily be the most beautiful angel, but just by the fact that he looks like an average schlubby dude, he's like, I don't look as ugly as those saints. Excuse me. I don't look as ugly as those saints. Maybe that's why I got a, a step above everyone else. And if I think he said he may, he thought Lucifer looked thought himself even more beautiful than God. Maybe God isn't a much of a looker to begin with too. I'm being cheeky. Anyway, I'm being cheeky. Yeah, but they're both pretty vain. <laughs> they're both pretty vain. <laughs> that is true. Do? <laughs> God even more so. It's kind of funny. Even yeah. it. Uh, guys, making things happy is, um, or making people happy, making other people happy is also something that I, I value. And the reason why I do that is because if I make an effort to make the surrounding areas around me more enjoyable by improving the morale of the people around me maybe other people will do the same for me and if i'm down i will be in an environment where people are willing to lift me up as well and that sort of reciprocity even though it's selfishness it, 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 or you know it's not truly altruistic right but Re it, reciprocal it, altruism reciprocal altruism i find value in improving the environment that i'm in particularly because i'm in it right and mm -hmm. i like that idea so like oftentimes i'll go out i'll volunteer like i said i was volunteering this weekend because i want people to volunteer when they grow up and help kids out um, i'll pick up trash because it's it's nice to live in an area that doesn't have trash all over the place and it sure. keeps people from wanting to throw more trash because they'll throw more trash to a trash pile but they may not throw trash in a clean park right um i i have fun doing that and i i i don't think we get credit for it as atheists but you know what we don't i'm not doing it for the credit i'm just doing it because it's nice to be in a nice environment on the flip side, I do find a lot of Christians love the credit <laughs> that sells for a lot of different things. And maybe that's where the bad rap comes from. It's just we don't have a very good marketing team. Uh, what do you think? Uh, Dread, I'll throw it out to you. Do you ever do anything with reciprocal altruism in mind? Mm, well, uh, the whole pacifarianism thing is, is reciprocal altruism. I, I mean, the idea that uh, we need to uh, separate church and state Right. is the underlying mission of uh, pastafarianism um, uh, and having fun doing it, making people happy, uh, feeding the world with pasta. Yeah, let's get it on. Nice. Yeah. yeah, and Dread. It's, oh, John, finally back. Let's uh, go. It, it's it's all about you keel hole me and I'll keel hole you. <laughs> nice. Dread, there's an interesting uh -oh. concept. Oh, go for it, Larry. I was just going to say uh, the whole term reciprocal altruism is kind of a oxymoron. When you when you think of altruism, you're doing something without the thought of reward, right? And, right. Uh, yeah, but it's it's pretty hard. I mean, it's pretty hard to argue that altruism can be anything, right? But uh, modified. Well, I agree. A term like there are, there are arguments to be made that there's no such thing as that, that's full that's altruism. Right. Right. because you're always thinking of you know a reward you'll get from doing it even yeah, if it's or, just or even or even the good better. feeling you have right. like your right. your Anything. own pneumonia right yeah. is Ooh. dependent on the actions you have towards others so right in mm -hmm. that true sense there is no altruism I, if I you agree benefit mm -hmm. even emotionally not right. absolute anyway yeah right like for example i like it when other people are happy i already described that i like making right. other people happy <clears throat> if i was in heaven where i have complete you know access to flourish in any way i want to as a caring person i would be very sad for all the people who are still in hell who will be there for eternity dying and, and on fire grinning their teeth i could not enjoy anything i'm doing in heaven in any capacity if i know right. that there's billions of people in a hell yeah dying even if there was one person i'd be really upset with that in fact there's yeah. a really great story i forgot what it was called but it's basically a utopia town that underneath the town and inside a grate a sewer grate you can look at one person who's suffering and that person's suffering powers all the lights and and the food machine <laughs> up above. wow that sounds and, like a great story and none of these people can really truly enjoy it once they know that there's that one person down there suffering and it's sort of like is this really a utopia anymore it's the exact same conceit with heaven like i can't enjoy it if i'm a person that cares about other people the only way that i could yeah. enjoy it is if you took my brain or parts of my body and mm -hmm. and destroyed it so that that part of me doesn't exist anymore and at that point we're not talking about me anymore that's being it yeah. right Wait, wouldn't that anymore. actually be the ultimate schadenfreude <laughs> right you know you're up in heaven and and knowing you're 
you know, maybe your brother who's an atheist or exactly you know, your, uh, or, you know, the kid down the street that, you know, uh, got raped. Uh, but, uh, you know, the rapist is in heaven because he asked, he asked for forgiveness, but the little kid isn't right. Uh, you know, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Right. It's crazy. I have friends that are just openly, happily Christian and I let them know I'm atheist and we have a good time. And I ever wonder if they ever consider, yeah, but Ty's not going to heaven. And right. is, are they saying, well, is that Ty's fault or will there just be one day that I can make him turn around or what do I do with that? Because I'm not the only nice atheist that's out there. Yeah. And the more I let you know that, the more I, I could just open your eyes to the idea that there's different kinds of people. You should think about, OK, well, then God's chosen few. What are you going to do? Like, what's your scenario to, to resolve that? I'm not making your life complicated. I'm just saying the system itself is really messed up. Yeah. yeah do you yeah. remember? Do you guys remember when uh, Stephen Hawking died? Um, there was actually oh, yeah. mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of uh, Christian people who were uh, tr joyously triumphant in right. the uh, notion mm -hmm. that he was going to burn in hell. Yeah. Wow! Yeah, like, that was very good side, right there. <laughs> on the flip horrible. side, yeah, and those and if those people do go to heaven, could you imagine how terrible it would be to be in heaven where they're filled with all the grammar Nazis oh, of the world? Yeah. It's like it's pronounced yeah. Schadenfreude. I'm sorry, it's like uh, not Schadenfreude. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I know how to pronounce things. I was the best guy in my Bible school. It's like, oh, this is hell. I'm in hell. I got into the bad place. Oh, no. <laughs> What's going on in yeah, heaven? Yeah. There's like free Elvis Presley concerts going on 24 7. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. uh, so we should de define shod and fruit, though, right? Because it's not enjoying, everyone knows what that's Enjoying that term the misfortune means. of other people, right? Exactly. Mm. Yes. Mm. Taking pleasure in other people's misfortune. Is that masochism or sadism? That's sadism, isn't it? So I'd be... say it's sadism. It's sadism. It's sadism. Yeah, even though you're not responsible for their suffering. You're not directly responsible. You're I always mix up those it. two, and I feel like those are important terms to know because you never know when you need to use them. So, like, <laughs> masochism is you, sadism is you on other people. It's like, okay. Anyway, so, 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 Ty, here's, here's a question for you. Why is it? Why is it masochism, but machismo? Oh, he's coming back. He's coming back. <laughs> See, he got the apple working, and now he can be like, now I can be <laughs> in charge. Now I have the power. I have the I have my capital building behind me. I'm doing this. Yeah. Oh, I do I've, I've charged. Time. I've charged everything up. <laughs> it's all charged up. It's all. It's all working again. No guys, stopping him. Guys, I had a great show. Uh, I, I love talking to you guys. I'm so glad everyone was able to come in. Um, chat's happy. Everyone's good. So how about we do this? We can wrap up. Uh, I'd love to know, uh, Dread Pirate, if there's anything you'd like to plug. And you got time. So anything on you? Because I know you got a full plate. Yeah, sure. Well, um, uh, again, I'm going to try and get down to this um a clergy project uh, event in Vancouver on the 28th of this month. And it is being hosted by the Center for Skeptical Inquiry. Mm -hmm. So those are two great things to check out. To check you were, out you were telling project. us before the show that they had how many members now? Might uh, 1225, want to tell 25, he said. So yeah, that's, that's a lot of former yeah. priests and pastors and yeah. uh, whatever. They call them. And sometimes current. I mean, these are people yeah, that yeah, may right. still be behind the, the pulpit, but don't believe yeah. anymore. That's right. Going through the motions. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. not just it's not just Christians now. They've got oh, no, Muslims, Hindus, and, and Mormons, and JWs, you know, all the various different types in that 1225. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and then you can find them at clergyproject.org. Mm -hmm. And I hope, I hope yeah. this can lead to an actual lawsuit or like a court case where we can just have this like officially settled out. Uh, to give you an idea, in 1920s, it was was it illegal or just not allowed for an atheist to even give testimony because to affirm that you, you could spread, give yeah. testimony, yeah. you had to do so on the Bible. You had to do so religiously. And our mm. Constitution clearly states that you can't force people to follow uh, a religious uh, dogma. Yes. In, a, in any sort of context. Mm -hmm. And so when the atheists complain, they're just like, well, then you just can't give testimony because of X, Y, Z. It's like, that's not legal. You can't do that. We have to fight yeah. just to be able to be in a court yeah. and affirm who we were and say, we will give you fair testimony, but we're not going to do so on the blood of a guy that we don't even think exists. I'll just tell yeah. you that you can, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the fair testimony, put me under perjury if I'm lying, but mm -hmm. I'm willing to do so, but I'm not going to affirm with a forced on religion. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. 
And, right. and you know, and, and Trump, of course, will only swear in a Bible if it's upside down. Upside down. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. So like we have to right. fight for a lot of stuff. I'm just saying this is the fights that get us towards, you know, progress. Yeah. Fred, I hope I hope you have a Pastafarian scripture to swear on. Yeah, oh, of course. Absolutely. You bet yeah. you. You're like, listen, if you yeah. if you know, I, I've taken it where uh, I've been in a circumstance where I, I might be asked to. Um, you know, I can, because I can affirm, uh, certainly, and I, because I do process serving, I, I, you know, I deliver legal documents to people. Um, but I have to, of course, swear an affidavit. Mm -hmm. Um, so I haven't yet, but I think I, I, the next time I try, or the next time I do, I'm going to bring in my, uh, my gospel of the flying spaghetti monster and see if uh, if that'll, if that'll fly. Yeah. Good for you. Because if anything, got to take that out. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> All right, John Richards, what's in your plate? Well, yeah, we uh, we did this very good chat yesterday with somebody from the uh, clergy project who was amazing story. <laughs> he's he spent, as I said at the beginning, twenty five years in China. He speaks Mandarin fluently. It's a an atheist country by, by and large, but they're not critical thinkers. They are inducted into atheism as children. They're told that it is the way to behave. So it, it's very weird. Uh, so I have two meetings coming up later today, and it's a good job I managed to boot up the old computer <laughs> because I've got uh, an AUK podcast scheduled with John Lombard. He is the rep from TCP that uh, I'm referring to. And in regard to this event they're staging. Um, oh, I forget the name of it now, I have to, I have to Google it. But uh, I've also got the usual Views on the News. Views on the News. Yes, the new name, the new name for Global Atheist News Review. Great name. We've, yeah, we're, we're, we're upgrading, you know, new, new backgrounds, new transparencies, new names, keeping the pace going. Good right. question. Is it news or entertainment? Well, <laughs> I mean, Fox the, News uh, has news, but they that's the entertainment part of the news. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, that the, silly? Global Atheist News itself tries to be dispassionate, unbiased news, hmm. and I research all the items from several different sources in order to get a consensual viewpoint. But. I see. Of course, views on the news is all about people's opinions, and they right. they introduce their wisdom and their wit, and it, that's much more mm. like entertainment. Sure. Furthermore, we're, we're actually developing some new shows, which we hope will be pure entertainment. One of them is a quiz show called Know Your BS, and you can take that to yeah. mean... Hey, Butterfly Soup, we talked about that on the show. Very cool. Great job. All right. <clears throat> so good. That, that's Guys. coming guys you can find my stuff on let's chat on youtube uh i also got a web comic i don't need to plug that here but anyway if you're interested just check out youtube let's chat i'll do some sign language breakdowns i'll do some uh videos where i do interviews with people and of course i got this show right here with some of my favorite people in the world happily talking to them about science religion and the fact that there are no souls wait there are souls larry tell us all about the fact that there are souls <laughs> there are souls i've got two of them one on my left foot and one on my right foot <laughs> well that's that's better than what went through my mind when oh. i heard you say there's our souls <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Anyway, you can find my content on Facebook. Uh, I'm sorry, on uh, digitalfreethought.com. Hmm. When you go there, be sure to click on the blog button. It will take you to our radio show archives, uh, atheist songs, and articles on the subject. Uh, the articles on the subject I have put into a book. It's called Atheism What's It All About, which is available on Amazon. Thank you, Dred, for showing it. Uh, and my YouTube channel handle is Doubter5. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Amen. Bye. Bye, everybody.